Kia ora Canterbury and welcome to Canterbury Live on Thursday the 16th of July. Well if it's your birthday then many happy returns for the day from the Canterbury Live team. You share it with two very fine gentlemen. I'm sure you'll recognise this face. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! Some very fine undies there, Mr. Will Farrell, who is celebrating his 48th birthday today. Very funny man indeed. Now, next up, you will certainly recognise these legs. And unbelievably, Michael Flatley is 57 today, looking very well preserved there. Of course, the genius behind Riverdance. The, well, they were, I think his legs were uh, insured for well, a few million pounds anyway, but many happy returns to the both of them and to you if it's your birthday. Radio, this wonderful vinyl here, Salmonella dub. We have a lucky, sorry about that. There we go, we can set nice there. The winner of this beautiful vinyl is Rebecca Sandys. Congratulations, Rebecca. This will be heading to you, and uh, we'll be in contact shortly how you can collect it from us at reception here at CTV. But remember, it is July, and we have this wonderful painting from Ira Mitchell Kirk, set down there in the beautiful central Otago, in particular Arrowtown. And this could be a feature in your home or your business. All you need to do is just call through on 3 333 or go to our Facebook page and leave your details. It's as simple as that. Radio coming up on today's show, the Red Crosser here, and we're looking back to Vietnam and all the wonderful work that the Red Cross did during that time. Brent Lattimore, Focus Financial, is here, and he's giving us all those tips about bringing the credit card limit down. That's right, not up, but down. And the F word, the F word. Could it be fudge? Maybe not, but it's a wonderful new play from the Elmwood players, so we catch up with one of the team to tell us exactly what we can expect going along there. But first up, I have a couple of Land Rovers, yes I do. Just two. If, I had, if someone had their way, we'd probably have more in the house, but two at this stage. So I'm joined now by the chairman, though, of the Canterbury Land Rover Club, celebrating 50 years this year. Dave Lockett, welcome. Hi, how you going? So does mine come up to par in, in the car park? Could be a bit shiny, but... Uh... It's a bit too shiny, is it? <laughs> is it a bit too clean? Well, we are an off-road club. Oh, we, right, OK. We, uh, Radio. OK. Yeah, it's not about the, how, how pretty they look, it's getting out there and enjoying the outdoors. So. Jeez, I've been brought down a peg or two. Thanks very much that oh, day. Right, it was all great good. seeing you, and uh, we'll catch up <laughs> next time. See you <laughs> right, you are celebrating 50 years. That's pretty cool indeed. It's a quite a good feat, isn't it? It is. Um, it's uh, yeah. It's, it's next year, but we're trying to raise the exposure of the club this year. Mm. Um, there's, yeah, we're up to about 1,200 in on our membership numbers, and, and we've still got the original two life members, membership number two and number seven. So it's quite a bit of depth in the club. And, so what do you do? You talked about the four driving. So yep, if I become a member, what can I expect? Um, we run day trips, um, weekend overnight trips, um, and just get out into the. Can we go here now? Oh, yep. Yeah, this is a, this is one of our training days. Right. We um, we train our members um, to recovery techniques, which is one of our club members there has managed to get himself stuck <laughs> deliberately. But, uh, okay. <laughs> and then we have to you know figure out how to get him out um, the safest possible way. So safety is paramount. That's one of our iconic trips that we do every year. Where's that? That's Lake Mason. We it's ended up with um, 19 Land Rovers on that trip, so we lined them all up to take a photo. That's my little girl. So Your little girl. Having, having a bit of a play in the mud at the Y Macarere. Does she so have a name? Big Red. Big Red. Big Red. Yeah. Yeah. My other one's called Olive, so she's... Olive? <laughs> well, Random. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Um, this is probably a classic shot, though, the one coming through the water there, isn't it, really? Yes, When you is. think of a Land Rover. Oh, yes, yeah. That's they, cool. um, yeah. We, um, yeah, we, we emphasise the training keeping things nice and safe and yeah. preparing for trips and so on. This but is, here it is in the flesh though, this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is our all-star um, kids 
day where we take the special needs kids out and they're all in the back and just having an absolute blast. So we try to make it as exciting as possible for them. <laughs> <laughs> caramba! Yeah, so they thought that was pretty cool. And, that yeah. is cool though, isn't it? Hmm, and yep. it seems like a simple thing, but just going through hmm. water, Yep. how yep. much joy, and I'm sure those children are giggling, but I'm sure the adults get into it as much, just as oh, much, don't they? The biggest kids are holding the steering wheels. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you'd really want to do a big drive on um, having new members join, don't you? Yes, yeah. I mean, the, the club's been involved with the community for a long time. We're pretty much the backbone of the emergency four-wheel drive team as well, which is, you know, when we had the snow incidents and so mm. on, we get the nurses to the hospitals, we get the doctors to the hospitals. Um, yeah, if there's any, we've been up in the high country taking shepherds to snow rake for sheep and, you know, we've got the vehicles that can can get there so um, yeah very um, cool very well you've fun. got a great website and mm -hmm. um, we've got the come up there there we are mm -hmm. okay so it's clroc.net.nz now to join though we need to email your good self don't we at the moment yep email yeah. me um, we can there is a, um, a prospective new members section on the website and that will give you the application form and a bit of uh, uh, an introduction as to what the club is about um, we are a very uh, family orientated club. We, we're, we're not a competition club. We, we don't enter into competitions. Right. We're just wholly and solely about getting out and enjoying the, the great outdoors um, and just, yeah, just enjoying life really. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a lot of work so it's nice to get out and do something recreational. And, oh, of course it is. Mm, of course it is. And, and there's, there's a real country. love affair with mm. the Land Rover. Is. What do you think it is about that brand and about that vehicle that just does it? simplicity it's just a box on wheels it's it's uh, there's it's I, I always joke it's the romance of travel you know um, <laughs> it's not about getting somewhere it's about the journey so you know um, yeah I, I, my, I couldn't say any better that's yeah, it it's yeah. not the well, it's the romance it's the journey it's the journey yeah Perfect. I, my 1977 Land Rover is it rattles and you go down a gravel road and you feel like you're being shot at by people with the <laughs> stones flicking there's no insulation there's no soundproofing but just love it. Good on you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dave. And right. remember, you've got those details and you can watch online as well about how to join the Christchurch Land Rover Club. Well done. Take care. All the yep. best. Thank now, you. after the break, we're joined with everything F. Yes, Focus Financial and the F Word. It's a good song, don't you like it? Great it's a good song. one, isn't it? Great song. But it has great lyrics, because it's very much money. It is too tight to mention. That Sometimes is. we just don't like to talk about it. No, no, no one likes to talk about it at all. No, actually. it's like the... It is. It's don't like a big know. elephant in the room, I, isn't it? I don't want to know. La, 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 la. <laughs> Envelope comes. Oh, I'll file that. I'll file that. Yeah. Um, credit cards. Yes. Now, they can be great things. Mm -hmm. They can be. Um, they can be really bad things too. Yes. So uh, last week we talked about debt consolidation mm. and part of that was consolidating credit cards. And, and so this week I wanted to say, well you need to, once you consolidate your credit card debt, mm. drop the limit. Because yeah. when, when we apply for loans at the bank, the, um, the bank assesses the credit card limit. So not what you owe on it, the actual limit. So they take a percentage of that limit when they're working out their calculations. So the higher right. your credit card limits are, the less you can effectively borrow. Mm. And so there's no point in having a, if you've got $2,000 owing on a credit card, having a limit of ten or, or 15000 because it affects your ability to borrow. There but I'm actually seeing more and more people now, though, they have the debit cards, okay? So they're the same thing. They can still buy things online, but the money has to be in their account before they use it. I think they're great. It's, I, I personally use mine so much. Yeah, yeah. And, and now I'm seeing more and more, and I love it, that people don't have the credit cards. And, and more and more people just have the debit cards, so they're not tempted by the limits. And and when they, you know, if you see something, they just buy it. When in actual fact, they haven't got the money there, because a credit card, you know, interest rates about twenty odd percent. Oh, it's hideous, isn't and it? It's, it's yeah, it's huge. And what I also you see though is people um, banks that are advertising to transfer the debt from another bank yeah. onto a low interest or yeah. no interest for the first six months. Yeah, so one or two. What do you think about that? I mean, that, that's the drag the people in because for people like, say myself, who pay their credit card off in full every month, those offers 
are of no use to me yeah. whatsoever. So they only yeah. ever appeal to the people that, that use their credit card and don't pay them off. And so the bank knows that you know they're going to offer that 1% or 2% for that first six months, but after that the client's still going to owe money on it anyway. So then of course that interest rate goes back up to 20% and yeah, they're fine. So it's mm -hmm. just it's, it's a sales tool, I guess, with the banks oh, at the end of the day. Oh, completely. But I, uh, yeah, look, I think, you know, for me when we're assessing loans, I don't, I don't mind if people have credit cards and it, it's, it's fine when we're looking at the loan, but mm. We really need to get that limit down to about five hundred or a thousand dollars because you you probably really don't need more than that. Well, let's bring that through to your first home buy, mm. or if you're buying um, another home, maybe that. Yeah. The credit cards do make a difference, don't they, they do, for the application? And they can make a big difference. Um, you know, if, especially if you have got a ten or fifteen thousand dollar limit, and you're wanting to borrow as much as you can, you know, it could could just mean a yes or a no. Basically, and as well as credit cards, of course, some some of these companies, it's an HPs mm. are on the cards, like the Q cards and things yeah. like that. Same, so same they're the same ilk, though, aren't they? Correct. Yeah, exactly the same thing. You know, offering the twelve months interest free, and then once that interest free period ends, you know, they start paying interest on it, of course, at a at a higher rate and, and other fees that are associated with it. So, you know, we prefer you avoid those as well. Or if you do take that twelve month interest free period, then make sure you've got the money there to pay it mm. off after that time. One of the things that's really resonated with me, one of the comments you made was that don't think this house is going to be the house yes. you'll be in five, ten years. Yes, correct. So you don't have to fill it no, with the things no. you will have in five, ten years. That's and is right. that the trap that people get into they with do. these credit cards? They do. So I guess when you go to um, furniture places and, and um, computer places and you see, oh, that, that bit of furniture would look good in the house and, and you, you buy it and you've got the credit card limit and you, you go ahead and do it. Banks mm. are quite often, if you, borrow, if you do take a mortgage through them, once that mortgage is in place, you, you'll see the credit card offers actually start coming okay. as well after that. So, But we really, you know, for me, a credit card limit to help me when I'm putting your application together should not exceed you know a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars because that won't make too much of a difference to what you're trying to borrow. No it's neither here or there. Not really, okay. no. So really if we're in the situation unfortunately yeah. that we do have a big credit card yeah. you know and probably maybe we've even got a hangover from Christmas yeah. potentially yeah. still paying it off and yeah. frightening Christmas is away and we want to have that first home, we come to, can we come to you yes. with that debt? Correct, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We can, um, and it's going back to last week, it's just uh, a couple of weeks ago, consolidating that debt into right. one loan. Okay. And once that debt's consolidated, all those other high purchases and credit cards that you had are either cancelled or like for the sake of the credit card, the limit's reduced right down to 500 if you want to keep your credit card. But in those cases, people can work off a debit card, so the temptation's not there. Because if we're consolidating a whole bunch of debt, there's an indication there that they are quite good spenders. Mm. So we sort of need to manage that going forward. So yes, we can help with that debt it's consolidation. Fabulous. Yeah. And your Facebook page is tremendous because it has so much information there for its um, Facebook. You just go to hermit.co.nz yeah. there. It's really simple. We've got some great advice there. Yeah, it's cool. awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You're Brent welcome. is the man to see. Focus Financial Group phone 0800 334 338. Radio from the F of finance to the F word, the play that's happening this weekend at Alma Players, and I'm joined here by Nicola Pauling, one Hi. of the. What are you, I said actor before, but improvising is your main game, isn't it? But you, well, but both actually, both, but both yeah. actor improviser. Yeah. Welcome to Canterbury. Welcome to Canterbury Live. Thank you. Very excited. We've been talking. Had the luxury of talking about how awesome this play is, and it's so oh, hard yeah. to condense it down to a, a five-minute interview, but. In a nutshell, what is the play about? Uh, so the F word, it's not the F word that immediately springs yeah, to yeah. mind. <laughs> um, it's another word which, you know, is considered a dirty word in some areas today, which is feminism. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, maybe in my parents' generation that was a great word, but it seems to have changed and there seems to be a lot of people out there that just go, ugh. Oh. And, uh, yeah, so it, it really is uh, a very um, uh, humorous, uh, funny look at feminism um, in New Zealand today and where it sort of sits. You know, in the eyes of the law we're all uh, equal, but how, how does that play out, you know, in relationships, in the home, in marriage, when you're parenting, all those sorts of areas. So, so yeah. in a way you're bringing maybe a simple conversation over a dinner onto the stage yeah. and talking about the stuff that we just don't talk about yeah. openly. Exactly, and that's how it started as a very heated 
dinner party conversation between four of us who were all um, improvisers and theatre makers. Uh, and yeah, it started with one one of the men in the cast making what seemed to be quite an inappropriate comment, which I will not repeat. And it started this very heated uh, discussion that was hilarious, but um, just completely engaging. And we sort of two hours disappeared and we were all, ah. and at the end of it, we just sort of said, ah, you know, that's something. And isn't that great yeah. though, to have healthy debate? And you are, are you still, well, you're still friends, you're traveling we together, are you're still performing friends. together. We're traveling, yeah, yeah, so we're holding it together. <laughs> just? <laughs> yeah. Is there, there are certain things that you should maybe not talk about. Yeah, delicate issues and and issues that are personal and that you know some people don't have the same perspective on, but are still really valid and and real. So yeah. And sometimes those filters, you know, I sometimes think we should all have a filter, but not everyone has that filter, do they? In yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And sometimes you just sort of want to go. Mm, that's not okay, and but you don't know whether you should say that or not. No. Depends who your company is. And that's why the beauty is of coming along and going along, sorry, to the F word yeah. at Alan Plays this weekend is because we will have a bit of that real talk yeah. happening right in front of us. Yeah, and it's interspersed with, um, so it's, a, I mean, it is a comedy. I just yeah. want to make that yeah, point really yeah. clear. Um, we're not trying to preach um, at all. Um, it's about opening up conversations for people. You know, when you when you finish with the play after an hour and 15 minutes, go and have a glass of wine or whatever it is. Go home and talk about some of the issues. But yeah, so it's conversation in the play, but there's also lots of um, uh, quite surreal sort of um, skits and, and areas where we sort of explore in a very unusual way some of the issues that, um, that you, we talk about in the play. As an actor, you are putting yourself out there. Was there any yeah. moments that you actually went, oh, that's a little bit raw? I actually felt that. I can feel a little bit of emotion with this topic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we, we, we all bring our personal experiences. When you mm. are creating a piece of theatre, so this has been devised by the four of us, so um, we, we started using improv to make it and then we've scripted it, so it's based on all of our personal experiences. It carries our voice in it. And yeah, sometimes you're definitely up there on stage communicating things that you have struggled with, um, privately or just within your own relationship. Uh, and yeah, it's it's putting it out there. And it's putting it out there. It's awesome. Yeah. And one of the ones that we're touching on is dating in this day and age. Yes. Well, that's a big one in itself, really, isn't I it? I know. <laughs> you see, now that is not. That's not <laughs> that. So that. <laughs> Not for Damn you, it. my lovely. No, uh, but to, for the couple of the, uh, one of the gentlemen and one of the ladies in the cast. Ladies. Um, yeah, are definitely um, exploring that from the, their two different gender perspectives. And it's been really an interesting journey for them to look at what dating has meant for them and some of the, the games that get played out in, mm -hmm. in, in the dating world and how that sits with them. So yeah, there's a lot of talk about See, so about it's completely that. relatable. Whatever may the conversation that may happen over the hour and fifteen in duration, yeah. there will be something that you go, absolutely. Ah, I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah, they think it too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we're all trying to muddle our yeah. way through. It's it's the messy realities of you know try, trying to live in a world where we're trying to, to get you know this gender equality and and you know get a better world. And it's hard, and we sometimes don't know how to do it. And yeah. yeah. And no, you've sold it well, my love. It's going to be great. It's good. It's good. good stuff. Radio. So to purchase tickets, you can go to Event Finder. Yes. That's right. Very easy indeed. Yeah. There will be um, cash sales at the doors. Cash sales only. No, if possible. Yes, yes, yes. No, that's cash okay. Sales. We like cash. Cash is good. Yeah. Friday the 17th and Saturday the 18th of July, 8 o'clock, Almond Theatre, Aikman's Road in Merivale. And you can shoot along to Merivale later and, and dissect And the dissect. Play. Exactly. Dissect as you can... Wonderful having you in here, Nicola. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, stay with us because after the break, 1960s Vietnam, great music, a rough time, big war. We have the Red Cross. Fantastic song from Edwin Starr, actually. War, it's a brilliant song. And I'm joined by uh, Bob McKiro. Welcome to Canterbury Live here. Now, um, beautiful Carol Ball has brought you in here from the Red Cross. The 1960s, you know, we think of flower power, it was all fun and games and la la la, it was great fashion and time, free love. There was one hell of a war happening. Yeah, I, I think 
the 60s saw a huge change, particularly to the end of the 60s, because you had the Vietnam War, mm. you had the war in Biafra, where millions of people starved to death. Um, so Red Cross really became relevant. Uh, it, the, it, apart from the work that the New Zealand Red Cross was doing in New Zealand, there, was a hu there were huge needs overseas. And that's when the New Zealand Red Cross really got re-engaged in international operations. Mm. So tell me about your role over there. <laughs> well, at the end of the 60s, many of us were protesting and changing, uh, chaining ourselves to the gates of parliament uh, against the government. And then we realised that maybe if we went to Vietnam, we could make a difference by working there instead of complaining and protesting. Mm. So I was one of a number of young New Zealanders that took the opportunity to join uh, New Zealand Red Cross welfare teams in Vietnam. Incredible. Some of the things that you must have seen though, Bob, even though you're there doing some great work, you were there privy to a lot of things that we could never imagine seeing in a lifetime. I tell a lot of ex-servicemen that um, our role was to go in and clean up the mess after they'd done their job. You know, children running along beaches, burning to death with napalm that had been dropped, Ag Agent Orange, the defoliant, um, destroying communities and destroying um, the whole uh, ecosystems. Yeah, saw a lot of tragedy. Um, what, what did the people, you're saying, talking about the children running along and burning, I mean, you, you say those words, but that visually, what that must do you, that surely that must still resonate with you now, even so many years later. Well, I just came back from Afghanistan two days ago. Um, I'm still going, 40, 46 years, wow. working for the New Zealand Red Cross and off and on. And so I, I call it the storehouses of sorrow. You know, I've worked in those for 45, 46 years. And um, you never totally get used to it, but you do learn to shut your emotions down a bit. Well, that's an incredible thing to do. So the Red Cross, I mean, as you said, that was back then and then now, just two days back from uh, Afghanistan. What is the Red Cross doing currently in Afghanistan to assist? The Red Cross has, um, uh, I think, two New Zealanders working for the Red Cross in, uh, in Afghanistan. And both the New Zealand government and the uh, New Zealand Red Cross give a lot of support to the international body, the International Federation mm. and the International Committee of the Red Cross, which, or who are the, the guardians of the Geneva Conventions. Very important work. Oh, that's incredible. So what's next for you, Bob? Maybe a breather? A little bit too much to ask for you? Ma maybe a breather. I, uh, my, I, I have to look after grandchildren in the next <laughs> few months, so I'll have a quiet few months at home. Okay. Is there, in your capacity, is there still the opportunity for people if they want to make a difference to actually help and volunteer be part of Red Cross like you are going over and like you did when you first yeah. went over? Yeah, I think there are two things. There's a lot of work that the New Zealand Red Cross is doing at, doing at home, doing in Christchurch, mm. and there's the international work which, uh, which has high impact. Uh, I was just three months ago came back from the Philippines working for 18 months in the typhoon and the New Zealand Red Cross, supported by the New Zealand government, is doing a huge amount of, we now call it risk reduction, making communities safer and better okay. prepared in well, time. I'm afraid we're going to have to go, so I would love to have you back though to talk more about that. Very yeah. interesting indeed. Redcross.org.nz is the website. Congratulations to you, my friend. You enjoy that time with your grandchildren. I'm sure they'll enjoy you as well. We've had a fantastic show tomorrow, though. Woo! It's going to get hot in here. Burlesque dancer, yes, Bonita Danger Doll will be performing for us. Look forward to seeing it all tomorrow.